Bitcoin will rise on this date, not, well, this day, but uh, on the date that we're going to be speaking about on this particular channel. As we do get into a more um, holistic view, let's say, of the higher term time frame pictures. So we're going to be bringing up some some good old memes as far as charts to be looking over, as well as combining that with, I think, more, uh, I don't know, harder evidence. But ultimately, a lot of things kind of coming into collusion with each other as we do start to look at, you know, the likely next major low in terms of timing for Bitcoin here. So without further ado, we can just jump right into this one. I need to get my uh, notes up over here. Okay, boom, there we go. And let's go right into the chart view. Let's start off with the memes right off the bat here. So this is a chart of all the moon phases in Bitcoin's history. I want you to hold your judgment using your logical brain and instead use your stupid monkey brain right now with me, a monkey boy brain, as uh, as we look at the past historical results, whenever we've seen, I don't know if it's a full moon or a new moon, I think it's a new moon, the, uh, the grayish moon that you see right here, for example. Now, in the past uh, year and a half almost now, going back to the beginning of 2023, let me just make sure that you can actually see this. Uh, Whoops, I'm drawing things over here. There we go. Um, uh, going all the way back to, be, to the beginning of 2023, where this uh, market cycle did indeed start, we can see that these, I think they are new moons, um, have been generally pretty good, pretty good at actually getting um, upside moves. So I would say that while you are using your monkey brain right now, one of the most humbling things, to, at least in my opinion, is to ask myself, okay, uh, if I would have blindly traded this and just been stupid old monkey boy right there, uh, just buying on these new moons, would I have done overall well? Well, yeah, out of 16 out of all 16 that we've seen in the past um, about a year and a half now, 11 of those were major massive lows, um, meaning that only five of them were, you know, kind of failures. Now, obviously, when Bitcoin's been more or less a vertical in the past year or a year and a half, I should say, um, those five failures were just kind of short term failures, to be fair. But uh, but even with that in mind, you know, the ones that did work out, you know, we're marking off some pretty Im impressive lows. So the timing of those was significant is what I'm trying to say. Um, now, not all of them were just, you know, zoom on to new all time highs exactly from here, obviously, but it was a generally good area to be aware of uh, in terms of timing for the next sort of upside move. And what do you know, Bitcoin's about to get another one very, very soon here, as these typically do happen about 14 to 15 days apart from each other. And we just got our last bearish moon, or I think it's a full moon. Um, over here on Monday, the 8th of April. So that means that 14 days out will put us on to Monday of next week, the 22nd. Um, so Monday, Tuesday-ish. Uh, again, doesn't necessarily mean that Bitcoin needs to go up exactly on that date. You know, it is a little bit of a clickbait title. I do apologize about that because, well, it's YouTube at the end of the day. Um, it's the only way to play, to play the game is what I'm finding out, which is a good time for me to say that if you do find this content valuable, if you like some monkey boy moon action, please do consider liking and subscribing because I do these videos each and every day. And well, usually we look a little bit more statistically based stuff, but this is still st still of relevance as well. And again, I do like to kind of humble myself and just look at this in general and be like, hey, could I have done better than this uh, with other tools? I mean, I mean, 69% basically is is like pretty damn good. So I'll just put it that way. Um, anyways, uh, yes. Okay, so we've gotten that. We've gotten that. Um, again, that'll happen on Monday or Tuesday-ish region, which, by the way, if you were on yesterday's video, you know that that is um, one day or a, a couple days after the halving. And of course, if we go back into our halving chart right in over here, we can see that Bitcoin, generally speaking, on the halving, on these green vertical bars that you see on this particular chart, um, did mark off basically the lowest price point before uh, never going below there ever again, two out of three times. You know, we've only seen three halvings, obviously. And for the time that it did not, which was back when over here in, um, in 2016, the low was put in after the halving. So what am I trying to say? In terms of timing, uh, very unlikely that we, that we actually see the low before that date. Bef uh, be before at least the halving itself, which is going to be around Saturday. Again, Saturday, very close to the day that we're looking at over here on the good old moons, um, which would be Monday, Tuesday-ish region, which, you know, actually has been, I mean, pretty good in timing those. So again, some of them were not, not perfect, obviously, but, uh, but, but, but decent enough. Anyways, back into this one over here. 
Um, you know, a lot of the time we do see swings back down around that uh, around that region, like we saw back to, on over in 2020 and actually 2012 as well. You know, where you see Bitcoin pop back down, but put in a higher low right there, and also right here as well, a little bit close to it in terms of percentage wise. But uh, but again, in terms of, of price. It was very, very close to the low or literally on the low. Um, and only one time did we see Bitcoin put in the low after that. So again, patience, I believe, is a virtue as of right now. It typically is a virtue in general. And it's time to be a monkey boy. Again, put your damn monkey thumbs up your monkey bungholes and just wait. Just fucking wait. Um, Elsa's giving me a weird face right now. But don't, don't tell me that you haven't thought about doing that yourself, you fucking monkey girl. Um, anyways, uh, anyways, again, Bitcoin having coming in probably on Saturday-ish region. Um, so again, it's a few days away. Um, anyways, taking that one step further and again, looking at uh, um, something that we looked at yesterday would be the weekly stochastic oscillator for Bitcoin. Again, anytime that we have seen the weekly stochastic oscillator get above the critical zone, which is the 80 read that my cursor is currently uh, tracing right now, and then come back down below that critical zone, as you can see on these green vertical bars, has correlated incredibly well with lows for Bitcoin very, very close to the price lower or at least on or, or on the price low. Um, so as you can see right here, you know, out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times for the full history of CME, only two of those have not worked out. So um, again, out of yeah, it was eight times, so six out of eight. I don't have my, cal where's my damn calculator? I need my fucking calculator over here. I need to know the numbers. Give me the damn numbers. Six out of eight uh, would be 75%. Should have been able to do that in my own head. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man, that's embarrassing. Uh, but again, you know, while it does uh, indicate kind of around that price and even timing low as well, you know, this will open back up on Monday. Again, playing hand in hand with the moons, with the goddamn moons over here and the halving over here, you know. So most likely early next week is probably what we see in terms of uh, timing. Um, maybe it drones out a little bit further from there, but in terms of price, percentage-wise, probably doesn't deviate too much from the low of next week, essentially, is what I'd, is kind of what I'd be looking at from here. Um, so, uh, so again, in terms of timing, I think just waiting a little bit right here is going to be, uh, is going to be rewarded. Um, as we can see that the weekly stochastic oscillator, again, is very likely to close below the critical zone this week. Maybe it takes one more week um, and does something like this. Uh, a lot of the time we, we actually have seen kind of like this wedging action on the stochastic oscillator uh, in more intense bull markets. I'll show you an example um, from prior cycles over here. Uh, one that really sticks out to me would be 2017. You know, same thing, kind of wedge itself into this region. And then once it actually broke that long term, that was, that, that was your top actually in 2017. But back on a CME chart over here. Um, you know, that is going to happen very likely at the end of this week, opening up into next week or, or happens at the end of next week. So again, I'd give it like a week spread there in next week. We very likely see the very close to, if not the price low next week, um, which would be, I don't know, what's actually the timing on that? The 22nd to, uh, yeah, 22nd to 29th, basically. So probably some, sometime around there, if I had to guess. Um, also, that, that, that timing will likely allow for the two-day time frame stochastic also to, to come back down towards this regression that we have uh, going on from the last few major lows, the lows of, of August of last year, September of last year, and yet again in January of this year. Um, so you can imagine that in about one or two more periods, it should come back down and test somewhere around there, around the edge of the bearish control zone. If it does reject, again, probably an earlier warning sign that Bitcoin is ready to, uh, to put in that low and dig its way upwards and onwards from there. Now, here's the thing. Again, in terms of timing, you know, these things can take some time. <laughs> it's a bad, uh, redundant term to be using right there. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it can take some time, obviously. Uh, but in terms of like price, probably very, very close to it. Um, so yeah, anyways, uh, okay. So we've gone through that. We've gone through that. All right. So that's, yeah, that's kind of answering the question of the, um, of the title of this video, some good old clickbait right there. Anyways, um, now let's go into the short term. So short term is interesting for Bitcoin here. It is Wednesday. And with the advent of the last couple of days, Wednesday is now <laughs> the most, the most likely to close positively. Uh, if we measure back from the beginning of 2023, again, the beginning of this bull market till present date, um, as both Monday and Tuesday did close, uh, or sorry, Monday did close negatively, which was the prior, uh, most likely day. So 
So now it is Wednesday, which is actually tied with Friday, I should say, at 56 and a quarter percent of all Wednesdays in the past almost a year and a half now, closing positively. And the other interesting thing about Wednesday is that it is the second highest bullish return um, average rate at two spots, 70%, just uh, spot zero, 6% difference than Monday, which is technically the highest. So let's look what that, let, let's, let's look what that would, let's look at what that would look like in terms of range, why does that not sound right? I don't know. Um, anyways, let's let's say it does play in line in with those statistics, which as we'll go over a little bit later, I actually do think it's probably poised for a bounce attempt here. Um, still 65,600-ish region to the upside would be top side of the range. To the downside, uh, loses an average of one spot 66. I do think that we could very easily see a test to the bottom side of that 166 or 160-ish region, which would be just below 63,000 um, bucks, maybe in like the mid 62s or, or sorry, upper 62s. Uh, but ultimately, I do think that Bitcoin is more than likely poised for a bounce today um, as one you know Wednesday is technically speaking more likely to close positively um, in the past a year and a half and also if we go over here to the six hour and even four hour time frame there is bullish divergence forming for Bitcoin we can see that the RSI from the lows of uh, what was this yeah March 20th to now are making higher lows on the RSI while making slightly lower lows on price action. So there is a divergence there between price and momentum. Price made slightly lower lows, momentum remade made higher lows. So in this case, you know, you probably get a bounce attempt, maybe after one try, you know, here to kind of fill the gap, play out that little Nike swoosh sign of a LARP line right there, something like that. Um, like I said, maybe very low 63s or very high 62s. Um, fair enough on CME. Four hour time frame has it a little more obviously and also and also very obvious in the more short term here too. We even have, well, I wouldn't even call that out. But uh, in this case, you know, you do see a divergence right here as well. So very likely poised for a bounce, um, you know, today. I don't think I, I, I would still have my reservations on this bounce being like the bounce, the bounce to take it back up to the heavens and beyond. Um, I do think that it can very easily bounce back up, maybe close to 66,000 um, bucks. But here's the thing. As long as this bounce it's, it's very similar to the other day, actually, um, when we were talking about uh, uh, Sunday, Mon Monday, basically. Look, it's probably going to bounce from this region. I don't think it's going to go lower necessarily than, than the current lows. Same thing as yesterday. Um, but as long as this bounce fails to get back above the 618 fib here minimum, which is, let's just call it 69,000 bucks, great number. It's just another bounce before likely headed lower. Um, and there is risk basically into the beginning of next week is what I would say um, from a timing perspective based off of what we saw over here with the moons, what we saw over here with the halving and what we saw over here with the weekly stochastic all sort of. So putting all those puzzle pieces together is like, you know, until basically next week, until we get to next week, yeah, there's still risk of going lower still, you know, 58,000 bucks or 59,000 bucks is an area of interest. Um, if that fails, then probably looking at, I don't know, 55 or 54 or sorry, uh, some, some between like 53 to 55. Um, but, uh, but yeah, again, tight margins here. Again, this is really the sort of, I don't know, nuanced portion of this market. Um, and I keep on repeating it because this is really a note to myself, uh, based off of, you know, past mistakes that I've made, um, especially when I was trading on a more discretionary sort of, uh, basis. I don't do that anymore. I trade all ag algorithmically. Um, but <sighs> what's my main message here? It's like, look, don't want to get too damn bearish. Yeah. I can come down a little bit more. Fair enough. Okay. Um, but if you are thinking long-term again, from, from, from a very long-term perspective, you know, it's probably not gonna make a huge amount of difference. Probably not gonna make a huge amount of difference. I think worst case scenario, maybe we see like 53 perhaps worst, 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 worst. Um, anyways, uh, so yes, we've got that. We've got that. Okay. Now let's go back on, uh, actually we can get to that later. Uh, now let's go back on over here to daily stochastic momentum. Again, I would still have the I still have basically the same thing to say about this as I have um, throughout the past like week and a half now. As long as this is angle to the downside, I'm not looking for the bounce, uh, you know, for the next like major higher low for Bitcoin. Um, this one will remain down today as long as Bitcoin's below 70,000 bucks. While I do think that Bitcoin bounces, I don't think it's, I think it's unlikely to bounce back above 70,000. But hey, if it did, okay, that would be good enough for me to probably just say, all right, monkey boy time over. It's up. It's up, baby. <laughs> up your fucking Angus. Uh, two day time frame, also again, position to the downside below 70,500. And five day, same shit. Sorry, 73,200. 
closing tomorrow night. So, um, you know, I think I think it's very unlikely to bottom here as of right now. Just a bounce, just a bounce, just a bounce. But especially as long as below 69 bounces are just lower highs before um, probably retesting these lows, maybe making slightly new lows. Um, we can see that this formation is also like getting very mature here as far as volume goes, starting to wedge itself into this region. You know, usually the, you see these break when they're about 75% full. And this one's going to be 75% full middle of next week. Wednesday, Thursday, crazy, fucking crazy. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, let's go back on over here to the HPDR bands. Let's see what we got. Is there anything that we haven't really already said? Um, you know, just kind of following up on this, uh, the 78.6 level continues to hold. Again, I think that we can once again retest the bottom side of it at, you know, low 63s, upper 62s, probably a bouncy area. At that point, the top side of the 61.8 level is actually 66.6. So, you know, does Bitcoin try for a bounce today slash tomorrow? Probably. Um, again, I just have my reservations with with that as a bounce. And especially as long as Bitcoin is below the median, I, which is all the way at 71,000 bucks, probably comes back down to 70, by the way, in the next day or two. But, um, you know, it's just, in my opinion, no, no rush to get bullish um, calling this like the next low just yet. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Holy shit, I just checked out the weekly. Huh, should have checked this one out earlier. Um, again, bottom side of the 38.2 level, 59.3. If it, if it did come down around there, I mean, that'd be an, another obvious area. So basically my areas for a low are, you know, I guess where it already is, uh, slightly lower at 59, 59 and change, or if things get really, really crazy, somewhere between 57, uh, sorry, 53 to 55. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see how things go likely does get clarified in the next uh, week or two here, I suspect. And that's probably a good place for me to be leaving off. As always, I want to wish you the best of best. Take care, much love, and fuck you, and see you tomorrow.